What's up YouTube, I'm Mike and today I'm back with another uh, what it's like going to prison video. Many of you have been waiting uh, patiently for the next update on this video. Um, I, I keep trying to tinker with the distance of my camera because when I get that really zoomed in look, it makes my already large nose appear like way larger than it is. So instead you guys get to see bottle tanned delts and pecs today and and redneck that doesn't really match. What am I talking about? Nobody gives a shit. Um, anyway, so on the last video of what it's like going to prison, I had explained that I had basically dodged a major bullet by making friends with one of the uh, correctional officers who saved me from getting rolled up with all of my other all of my other friends that uh, or most of my other friends that I arrived in the chain bus with. Um, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, obviously, then you need to go watch the other videos in this series. Today, what I'm going to be going into is um, basically the rest of the camp. What the what the other amenities in the camp were like. What camp life was actually like. As I think I stated in one of the previous videos, this particular camp was really more shut down than most prison camps. Most prison camps in the state of Washington have completely free movement all day long if you're not in work or otherwise locked down for like a count or something. The, the, the camps are all basically inside of one fence. In this particular location, Olympic Correctional uh, Center in Washington State, there's actually three separate compounds because it's literally at the foot of a mountain and so there was not enough room to build one giant facility with the trees and the mountains and everything and so there there were like three separate compounds and back in the day even despite the fact that there were multiple compounds they did have free range of movement between the individual compounds uh, but there's cougars in them hills and apparently one of the inmates was attacked I can't remember if it was a bear or a cougar Obviously, the stories you get when you're on the inside, uh, are, you know, but but the guards did confirm that there used to be free movement at the camp, and they had actually cut uh, through the trees. There were walkways cut through the trees so that you could go from, like, for example, I lived in what was called Ho Unit, and Ho Unit, that's H-O-H, -H, <laughs> Ho Unit didn't have, like, the gym or the recreational facilities as part of that unit. I can't remember what that unit was called, but nevertheless, used to, you could walk a trail through the trees to get to the gym any time of day, like on the weekend, you could come and go whenever you wanted to, you could stay as long as you wanted to, but because of the attack, they had the camp much more locked down. So rec was like, I think every, there was multiple times a day, but the only one that really mattered for me was evening rec, and, and I can't, I want to say... It was like 6 o'clock maybe, um, 6 o'clock in the evenings, every evening, and then there, there, was, multiple tra there, there was multiple times that you could go to rec. Um, so what would happen is during the rec period, if you wanted to go to rec, a, a bus would come, pull up at, outside of your unit, everybody who was going to rec would have to get on the bus, and then you'd have to stay there for the duration of that rec period. And again, I can't remember, it was at least an hour and a half, I don't think it was two, I think they ran every hour and a half. This is like a rotating bus schedule because that's what they had to do to keep <laughs> to keep people from getting attacked by animals, basically. So, um, <clears throat> kind of fucked up, you know, you catch a charge and go to prison and it's not the inmates that end up fucking you up, it's, it's the cougars in the mountains. So, um, nevertheless, uh, at the rec facility inside of this prison, uh, we had a uh, full court basketball, we had a, an entire weight room with a bunch of free weights. Uh, it was all free weights, basically no no machines. There may have been like a plate loaded like preacher bench maybe, and maybe like a, a maybe like one cable like for like pull downs and shit. But it, it was real basic. It was basically just dumbbells, uh, barbells, bench presses. Uh, like I said, I think there was some preacher benches. It, it was enough to get a good workout. And so I was maintaining about 157 pounds. I had a, a buddy named Dan, and we worked out regularly together. It was one of my favorite things to do when I was on the inside. Uh, it's really fucking therapeutic when you're in this environment with a bunch of dudes, and the, 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 the hormones are raging, and you're locked away from girls. And, and really going to the gym was, was, was my sanity even on the inside. 
And so I spent as much time as I could reasonably there. And so then, like I said, they had f full court basketball, so they had basketball leagues um, that you could join if you wanted to. Um, and then there was a separate room, and I want to say there were six pool tables. I can't remember. There was four to six pool tables, a couple of foosball tables, <laughs> uh, dart boards, and then some tables with like board games and shit like that. Um, we had three baseball fields. And um, and I think that was it, or maybe it was two baseball fields. So every spring and summer, we had a baseball league. In the fall, they had basketball league. You could go shoot pool. You could play um, foosball. You could you could throw darts. Um, and you generally the rec sessions, the, the groups of people that went were small enough that you you could easily get a table. You like you could easily do all of these things. So that's one of the things that pisses a lot of people off, man, when they find out that they think somebody who has committed a crime against their loved one or whatever is in some prison facility and they're, they're fucking suffering. And again, while I can't really speak to closed custody, certainly in a work camp, man, it, I, think I, I think I mentioned this before, it's really like daddy daycare. It's, it's like once you get over not being around girls, which sucks a lot. Um, it is really laid back, and you can you can really honestly have a lot of fun. It's fucked up. Like it, it really is fucked up. Just how much fun you can have. So, um, uh, and then back at the unit where where I stayed, the actual living unit, we had a ping pong table. Uh, we had a ping pong table. We had horseshoe pits. We had a track that, that went around the unit so you could walk track pretty much any time without ever leaving the unit. You could throw horseshoes, you could walk track, you could play ping pong, and of course we had ping pong tournaments, horseshoe tournaments. It was like finely cut, beautiful grass all on the inside of this, this area. So you could just chill, lay out in the yard, you know, hang out, read a book. Um, it was super chill, super laid back. In in uh, the winter when it would snow, guys would build like crazy shit out of the snow. They built a, a fucking igloo one year. It was crazy. It was like a full blown <laughs> igloo they built out of the snow that fell all over the camp. And so when you weren't working, um, you had access to the library, to the gym, Everything I just mentioned to the gym, uh, everything I just mentioned inside of the facility, and then there was game rooms like I've talked about, so there was always 20, well, just pretty much 24-7, not 24-7, not obviously, we, we got logged out at night, but any 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 time during the waking hours, you could pretty much bet there was a Pinochle game going on. Pinochle was the, the name of the fucking game in prison. Like, that, the who's who of the unit played Pinochle. And so um, the pinochle that they play is called Cutthroat Pinochle. It's a three-player game, but you can play it with six, seven, eight people sitting around the, around the table. You just rotate. So it's always, I'm not going to explain the entire game of Cutthroat Pinochle, but it's a form of gambling, and which is generally speaking a no-no in prison. Number one, it's, it's not technically allowed. Number two... The vast majority of the violence and even the sexual violence that takes place inside of prison facilities is often connected to gambling debts. Because as I've said in previous videos, the big thing inside of the prison facility is respect. And it's all about your reputation. And so if somebody gets into debt to you and they refuse to pay that debt and you allow them to get away with it, then you will basically be kind of a marked man. You will be considered basically a punk and can can have a lot of bad things happen to you. And so there are various ways that gambling debts get settled. Uh, sometimes it's through punching and fighting. And sometimes it is through um, forced intercourse. So I'm sure you understand. So, um, of course, all of this takes place um, completely under the scenes, under the radar, 
Because again, as I mentioned, any kind of disruptive behavior, especially fighting, both parties involved will go to the hole, will lose custody, and will end up in medium security. So there's winning a fight in prison is kind of a misnomer unless you get away with it completely. And so you have to be very good at how, how you accomplish this. So what happens is magically, uh, it's crazy, like a lot of guys trip and fall while they're in the shower. <laughs> I just can't tell you the number of guys that came out of the shower while I was in prison fucked up. And some of them didn't come out of the shower. Some of them were found in pools of blood in the shower because they got fucked up. And this was typically over a gambling debt or some other type of disrespect. So the shower is one of the, one of the safest places you can go because it's one of the few places the cops more or less steer clear of. They're not required to steer clear of the shower, but they are, they more or less do. Uh, usually what they will do is they will kind of just stick an ear in um, to, to get an idea of what's going on because unfortunately speaking, the shower is also where the overwhelming majority of the um, consensual homosexual behavior takes place and so there are certain times of the day basically that um, you just know uh, you don't go in the shower <laughs> because uh, that's that's when it's going down and sometimes you hear sounds coming out of the shower and it's almost like a, a lot of the things that happen inside these facilities the, the, the officers know it's not like they're dumb Okay, these people, they, they understand how their facility works and they also understand that there, there is kind of a pecking order that must be maintained by the inmates themselves and when that pecking order is upset, it usually causes more, more harm than good. And so, for the most part, the, the COs, the uh, correctional officers, take a hands-off approach to certain things and so I think it's a well-known fact that during certain hours of the day, there's behavior in the showers that nobody, that the vast majority of people in the camp just don't want to have anything to do with. While I'm speaking about showers, I guess this is a good time to talk about what it is like showering in prison. So, in inside of Olympic Correctional uh, Center where I was housed, um, you have what is called the shower room. And so, it's basically a big rectangle. And on where one end is open to B tier, uh, which is where the shower is, which is like I explained, you've got the tiers that come off like this. B tiers in the center. The the, sh the shower room is right here, and it is it is very near the cop's desk, though they they can't see in there. And so there's like a long like wooden bench with hooks above it, so that you can bring your shower gear into the shower, and then you can hang everything up, and then you can take a shower. Inside of the actual shower room itself, there are six six shower heads, three on each wall. There is a button that you can push that is an on-off button. That is all you get. There is no temperature control, pressure control, nothing inside of the shower. So if you want to, and the showers there are gas heated. So I think it was gas. So I'm pretty sure it was gas. So for whatever reason, I guess just due to the fact that you know you have a, a finite amount of, of heating power, a finite uh, amount of hot water, if you wanted to control temperature for your shower, the only thing the only way you could do that is control is by changing what time of day you shower. So the later in the day you would shower, the cooler the water would be. Now please understand the water was never cold enough for me. I like lukewarm showers and so it's very hard for me to get used to because even at 10 o'clock at night like which is usually when I would shower around 10 o'clock very very late 9 30 10 um, to get the coolest water possible because it would be fucking scalding hot uh, earlier in the day the water came out like a jet that was very high pressure so it was very, you know, you get very dirty working uh, in DNR when you're up cutting trees, planting trees, doing roadside cleanup. You get dirty, obviously. Uh, you're out in the in the wilderness all day, and so the showers are very good, very hot, very good for getting clean. 
Um, but of course, there, as I said, there are six shower heads. And so if you, you know, when you're fresh off the street, showering with a bunch of other fucking guys is not really what you're about. Some guys have had this experience to some greater or lesser degree with they, you know, they played sports in school. Uh, I did not. I don't know how much privacy you get. Like in high school, I've been to gyms where there were showers with very little privacy. But understand, this is just a rectangle room and there's no dividers, there's no curtains, it's just one big shower room. So when you're standing there soaping up your boys, there's six other dudes standing around with you. And so in the very beginning, it's very intimidating. There's lots of jokes that, 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 that go on in prison, like don't, don't, don't drop the soap. Because if you bend over to pick up the soap, you might have something happen to you. And basically everything, all of the horror stories that you hear about prison, more or less, at least in my experience, inside of a minimum security work camp are all massively overblown. Like, no, like nobody got, got graped that, that didn't have some kind of bad debt or something. Like, the, the sex that's going on in there is consensual. The violence that takes place is not like, like nobody's really like getting taken advantage of. It's not like some, it's not like you're, you're innocent and you're trying to mind your own business and you've done nothing to court any disaster and you just get jumped for no reason. I was basically never like within the first week or so of being in this, in this facility, I never ever felt unsafe anywhere. There was no place in that facility that I ever felt unsafe. Now, I had a couple of close calls where I almost got into some fights. But again, that was my own doing. Like, just general walking around. It's not like you're you're looking over your shoulder or you're trying to stay out of like any dark areas or you're scared to go in the shower. You make friends very quickly. And it's the same hundred guys, give or take, that all live in this unit. So really rapidly, you get to know most everybody that's in there. And everybody has their own sort of schedule and their sort of, their sort of way of being. So depending on what time of night or day you, cho you, you choose to shower, usually most humans are creatures of comfort, are, are, are creatures of habit. So like nine times out of ten, when I was showering late in the evening, it was like the same six to eight guys, give or take, that would be in the shower. So before long, you you all get comfortable. And, and nobody's, you know, like everybody sees everybody. But there's no, you know, like you're not, nobody's being a weirdo in there. It's not like dudes are like checking you out. Like the, the dudes that are down for that take showers at a different time, like I said. So like when I was in the shower it, with, with my friends, you know, it was just like showering with your, your buddy, you know, you're like, you, you, it's actually a lot of fun, <laughs> believe it or not. Like we would just be in there showering and just bullshitting, you know, like you'd be in there for just, you know, cause it's, there's not a lot to do. And sometimes like you get your ass kicked on, on those mountains, you know, hiking up and down those mountains, carrying a chainsaw with three gallons gas and it's hard, hard work. And so at the end of the day, at the end of the night to go just like, and then get get that hot water, that 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 high pressure jet on your back. It was almost like a massage. Just like work your fucking back out, you know, soap up, get clean, get the day off of you. And you just be in there basically with your boys chilling and bullshitting. Talking about sports, talking about girls, talking about life, just whatever. You know, it was actually kind of interesting and it was never anything uncomfortable somebody would eventually drop the soap and everybody go oh don't drop the soap it was like ha ah, joke you know somebody kick the soap across the fucking kick it back to you you pick it up you go about your business and so uh that that was basically showering prison it, it was it one of the is another one of those things where like if you if you've been on the street your whole life and you're going into one of these facilities it can be one of the most intimidating things you know, you imagine it's going to be one of the most intimidating things that could possibly happen. And it really, again, just ends up being nothing at all. It's just really, absolutely chill. Everybody's cool. Every, obviously, we're, we're all in the same boat. Nobody wants to get graped. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nobody wants any problems. Nobody wants to be looking at you or you're looking at them. Like, it, it, so it just becomes a non-factor. Um, you know, so as, as you, as you develop in the camp, 
you know, going to work, coming back, going to the gym, doing the different extracurricular activities, just like in high school or any other place in life, you 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 begin to develop a network of friends. And so then you're you are always sort of hanging out with your little clique or your little group. And then on top of that, there, there are also uh, other services like the religious services. So as I mentioned in previous videos, I got Jesus in a major, major way when I was in, when I was in, uh, in classifications, when I was in Shelton, when I was on 23 hour lockdown, I spent a lot of time in my Bible and that carried over into my, into my long-term prison sentence. So I would go to the various church services, uh, at the chapel, you know, you had regular church on Sunday morning. Um, you could either choose to go to Catholic service. I think the Catholic priest only came like twice a month or something. And then there was like a resident priest who I convinced was a pedophile, weirdo, sexual molester. We all hated this guy. He was like, um, you ever, you ever seen the movie, you know, in the movie Jurassic Park, the guy that is like the, the programmer guy who like tries to steal the, the, uh, whoever, whoever that guy is. He looked up. That, 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 that's what the preacher in in our in the prison looked like. He he looked like a creep, and none of us just trusted him. But you know, it is what it is. If you want to go to church, he's the guy that's fucking leading it. And the church services were not terribly popular there. Of the three hundred people who went to church, I mean, who uh, were housed in that facility, it was maybe ten percent, honestly. Maybe on a good day, 30, 40, maybe 50 guys would make it to church. And then in the in the evenings, various different denominations of churches from the local area in Forks would come and do prayer groups or, or Bible studies. Uh, I went to the Bible study that was put on by, I can't even remember the church. Sarah, are you out here? Um, they, they're... Uh, they're the church is um they're the ones that believe in speaking in tongues and shit. Uh it was not my brand of Christianity. I, I can't remember the um the name of it. Bur the they their school's the Berean school. It doesn't matter. Um they they believed in gifts of the spirit. So they believed in speaking in tongues, in um I can't even remember all the bullshit at this point. But uh is that you, Sarah? Yeah. What is the church I went to? The Speaking in Tongues Church in, in prison? Assembly of, God. Assembly of God. So the Assembly of God people came, and uh, I basically only went to that service, not because I shared their their beliefs and gifts of the Spirit, just because the guy who put on the service was just one of the best human beings that I ever met in life. He just genuinely gave a shit about all of us. And you're in this place where, for the most part, the, the COs can treat you like shit, and you've been through a really bad time in your life and you've had your orifices checked and you've been through the county process and you've been treated like an animal and you've been caged up and you you are away from your friends and your family and your loved ones and your girl and everything that you care about and this guy's name was Merle by the way and he was just like he said the biggest heart of any human being I've ever met and he was just trying to save souls man and uh, he came once or twice a week and did a Bible study. And so I usually went to that um, just to just because that's where I was at. That was my mental headspace at that point was very much a believer in, in, in the Bible. Like I said in a previous video, like there's nothing better when you're locked up than, than the Bible, man. Because Paul Paul spent his life part of his life in chains for the gospel, and the Bible can just make your make your it can give meaning to an otherwise really bad bad situation. And so that was basically what we had to do. Um, those were the amenities. Those were the programs. Um, that were available to us. So there was always something to do. I spent the vast majority of my time either playing, I played a lot of ping pong, um, year round. I played the shit out of ping pong. I played, we, me and Dan won the horseshoe tournament. Um, uh, we played softball. We play, uh, obviously lifted a lot of weights. I didn't play much basketball, not really my thing. Um, and then just, 
absolutely lived on the pinochle table. I don't know whether I'll make a video going into the pinochle, uh, but it's it's a, a fucking tremendously fun game playing Cutthroat Pinochle, and I passed so many hours of my time doing that. And then obviously you have your books and your library. So at this stage of the game, um, I'm still on what's called a C tier in a four-man cubicle and my living conditions are really shitty. Getting up at 4.45 in the morning with four dudes in very close proximity, bad breath, farts, trying to get dressed at 4.30 in the morning to go get breakfast, to go freeze your balls off in the, in the, in the, in the, in the woods all day, definitely is not a good way to wake up. And so um, I was looking forward to quickly moving on to the next stage of the game, which is um, what's called A tier. Uh, which is probably what I'll talk about next and then go into detail into some more of the inner inner workings of the kind of the politics and, and what was going on behind the scenes with the various different groups and how I kind of fit into that scene because I ended up having a, a, a rather unusual position inside the sort of prison hierarchy. So I think I'll save that for next time when we, we go into more of the prison politics at this particular unit and some of the things that I saw happen as a result of that. So uh, sorry it took so long to get this out. I just couldn't get excited about making this content. Uh, this has done a lot to kind of bring me back to that headspace. So hopefully I'll be able to produce these a little bit more quickly. Uh, please check out all the other videos that I've made. If you have not seen the video on what it, what it was like working at Sunbelt Material Handling, please give that video a click. I need that video to have the maximum number of views possible. So even if you don't watch it, just click it. And uh, obviously check out all the links. Uh, we have a Discord ch uh, uh, channel now. There's currently eight people live. Um, there's like 50 people in the Discord at any given time. So check out that. Um, all the links, all the pages, everything. Uh, do what you know to do. And as always, uh, we'll see you on the next one.